um, why we're going to be filming it is because um, we've got some children from interstate coming over to AMYB, and because they don't, they're not lucky enough to have a um, group like ours. What I thought I would do is for those children that are coming, is that I would be able to. Ah, that might help. Um, I would be able to send them the video so then we can actually, so they're not missing out. Because for the kids who are going to do AMYB, they're going to get a bit of a jump start, aren't they? Yes, babe. What's AMYB? So that's the Australian Meeting of Young Beekeepers. So we are hosting the very, very first. Can you remember when Laura went over last year, yeah. this year, sorry, to Slovakia? Yeah. And she went to that amazing competition. So that's, the, that's International Meeting of Young Children. <sighs> So in Australia, there has never been a meeting of young beekeepers ever. In fact, this is pretty much it in, in the whole of Australia. There are young beekeepers that actually meet in groups, like they might have a, uh, you know, like a, a, an adult group that kids can go to. But as far as like having all kids together, there's really hardly anybody. There's a few school groups and stuff, which we're really happy about, but not a lot of groups like ours. So for those children, and especially one Luke, he's over in Western Australia, and he doesn't have any kids. Yes, buddy? You have to be over 12 to be an AMYB. You do have to be 12 to be eligible to win the top three spots, which will then make you eligible to go to Slovenia. Did everyone realise that? Yes. So if the top three children will actually become the Australian Youth Beekeeping Team, that team will then, if we can raise enough money and get everybody over there, will actually go to Slovenia and compete just like Laura did this year. Remember Laura got 15th out of 80 children in the world, which was phenomenal. And, and we weren't even, we didn't even know what to expect. So we're gonna be doing a bit more training with these kids. Um, so kids like Luke, he's out there by himself over in Western Australia. He doesn't really know many other kids. So we're kind of helping him become a better beekeeper by kind of sending these types of things, but also to, um, it would be a bit unfair for us to be showing you guys all this stuff, which we'll be using at AMYB, if he doesn't get to see it. So I'm going to make a special video for him and another two girls that are coming down um, and send it up for them so they can see. Do people under the 12 do the AMYB just can't go to Slovakia? Yeah. That so you can do it, absolutely. Um, but it's going to be Slovenia, yeah. Um, but it is going to be quite technical. So we're going to have to know lots of things. Now, let's talk about a hive. Now, this is just a Langstroth hive, a bit like this one. So, who does? Who has one of these at home, like a Langstroth hive? Yep. Who has a different type of hive? Yep. What kind of hives do you have, Jen? Uh, we have the um, one that you, like, put boxes on, but not the um, boring hive. I like a Warray hive? Yeah, Warray hive. Cool. Awesome. And who has a Clove hive? Laura. Laura does have a flow hive. Yeah. My cousin has a flow hive. Yeah. Flow hives are good. No, flow hives are an amazing invention. In fact, I think they're really fantastic. We've got a couple in our shed, actually. The only problem is, is what honey do we get mostly around here in our area? Yes. Prickly box. Who remembers about prickly box? Who can remember something really special about prickly box? Look at that. It gets stiff really quickly. Candy's really hard. Now, who can tell me why a candy's really hard, Lily? Because of this, because of the sugar, the sugars that are in it. I can't remember which sugar. Would it be, there's glucose and the fructose. Glucose. Good girl. Well, gosh, I wish I had something to give. I'm going to find you something really special. Because who remember, who else knew that? You yeah. told us all before. Yeah. I have told you all before, but no one else kind of told me. So that's really cool. Well done. Well done. So let's talk about our frames, our frames, our hives. So for the for the kids who haven't been before, I know for the kids at home, they're like, I already know what this is called. But you guys are going to need it to know the most. So what do we call this? A stand. A table. This is my table that I use for my clients. But yep, today it's a hive stand. Okay. What do we, what's this bit here do we call? Yep. The bottom board. Now it's not Iola, is it? It's just Lola, isn't it? No, it's actually Iola. It is Iola. It's not Lola, it's Iola. Oh, thank you for putting that I, because even the other day someone corrected me and said, isn't it Iola? And I said, no, it's Iola. It's Iola, right. I'll never forget that again, I promise. 
Um, so what's this called, buddy? And um, the bottom board. Iola, Iola. Um, so this is the bottom board. Yeah. So for our one, some of our little kids. Uh, I shouldn't say little. New kids, our newbies. What do we call this part of the hive? Okay, um, Nikita, what do we call it? Yeah, not quite. See this bit where I'm. Oh, see this bit here. I'm not sure. Not sure, no. Yeah. Entrance. Yeah. Where's the exit? Do you think? No. Yeah. Exit. Where's? Yeah. So it's really they call it the entrance, but it's really the entrance and the exit. So when we, so the front door. The front door and the back door. So, so really, this is where our bees are coming in and out, and this is where they're landing. This is where they're taking off. All right. Now, what do we call this thing here? Um, I'm going to ask you, Ella. It could be called the frame holder, but we call it something else. And the reason we're telling you this is because when I say, can you go and pick up a... A deal? Not super. A super, yeah. Um, or a box. So when we say, we've got to add another super, you're thinking... On earth is she talking about? Is she talking about Wonder Woman over there? <laughs> Superman? Is she talking about what? So it's really important because we beekeepers use crazy terms for things, don't we? Yeah, we're talking about school, um, so like another one. Exactly. Yeah. So we call these boxes supers. Now this one here is quite big, isn't it, compared to our other one? One sec, let me just quickly grab one of our other ones. Is she going to Yeah, it's called the deep Look, like, the actual hearts that we have lost. Okay, see this one here? Yeah. One I prepared. more like that one. This is yeah. one I prepared This is one I prepared earlier. So, what can you see? What's the difference between this and this? Smaller. Smaller. That's an ideal. An ideal. So, we call this for the, an ideal super or an ideal box. Okay, what we call this one is a full depth box or a full depth super or a deep super. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference, isn't there? Except for this one's made of wood and this one's made of polystyrene. Now remember what we've said about our polystyrene boxes? When they have, they should last about 20 years. So once you guys have all grown up, then we're going to have to find a home for them. Can we put them at the tip? No. no. Can we recycle them? No. No, we can't because they've been painted. Not at the moment, not with today's technology, we can't. So here on the farm, we've decided um, we will actually dispose of them, we will bury them on the farm, which is kind of taking responsibility for our own waste. Um, but yeah, I... Will the bees be free after they get through that? Oh, I reckon in 20 years, I reckon we'll have different bees, yeah. I reckon. Who knows how long a worker bee usually lasts for? Um, no, not quite. Keep going. Keep going. Six months. Six. Who's the six? Yep, six. Yep, six. About six weeks. In summer. Over winter they can be longer, but so in twenty years there might have been a few generations, but um, a few. So this is what we call an ideal box. Okay, I'm going to ask Nikita. What's this one called? Ideal, yep. Yeah. And you know why I think they call it ideal? I reckon it's because when those frames are in there, it's mm -hmm. ideal for me to carry. Whereas, who was who was here at honey extraction last year? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you remember when we had the full depth frames, oh, yeah. full oh, of honey? Oh, and oh, how much did it weigh? Who remembers when we oh, weighed it? I think yeah. it was like eight kilos. No, I think it was a bit more than that. I think it was a bit more than that because I've got it written down. 30 kilos. 32 kilos, I think, from memory. Weighed 32 kilos. But those are the ones from your hive. The yes. Ones yeah. yeah and so, 32 kilos. kilos. Now, these hives, all these hives that are out here at the moment, are all getting bees in them in the next couple of weeks. So, we've got nukes coming. More for, yeah. more for junior beekeepers so we can get more honey. honey. That's, that's it. More bees. More honey. Bees. Bees. But more honey is important. More honey is not important but it would be cool. That's, that's an it means we have more that's honey. That's a side effect. It, it means we have more honey so we have more money so we can sell the honey so we can save the bees. Exactly. You do you don't need money always to save the bees. We, we can do things like we could buy things. 
but we yeah. could use Discuss. cuttings from plants to put more plants in, couldn't we? Mm. We could like ask friends for seeds. Have you done all the seed bottling and stuff yet? No, because you know that day that we had to cancel because of that weather? Yeah. We've still got all the stuff in there to do that. So we might even make those for the taste, so in our big working bee. But anyway, let's get back to where we're at. Wait a minute. So, who knows what this is called then? Uh, yeah, lid. Who doesn't know what it's called? That's the lid. Oh, everyone now, knows. underneath the lid, underneath the lid, there's that. what we usually have is a hive mat. Actually, I did hurt it here, didn't I? <laughs> I don't know. I certainly did have it here. It's that. It's you know, like you're, feel, you're filming yourself being very forgetful. You know what? <laughs> the best thing about filming yourself when you're forgetful is that so we're going to put now what we usually do when we use open our hive we're going to first off we're going to give it oh that's okay spiders don't hurt actually they can actually yeah but some of them can actually yeah it's oh no okay that one might have had wait a sec oh wait a sec did you cut its leg off Doesn't it? That doesn't look wicked though, doesn't it? But 
because we have to be able to remove our frames, because that's what buys the Carly. Remember Carla? Carla tells us that we need to remove our frames because that's the best biosecurity practice. Um, what we need to be able to do is start them. So you put a little starter strip on and let them actually make their own, so some natural wax, which will be so cool. Okay. Yeah, we'll we little, yeah, we can do that. Because how, yeah. do, you think we could put, do you think we could put natural yeah, wax agree. in an extractor? No. Because yeah. no. it won't fly off because it's not as... Yes, yeah. yeah. it's not as protective. Yeah, buddy. Um, in our live yesterday, we went to check it. Um, because we accidentally let the frame out before it was. Uh oh, rookie mistake. We had a, um, <laughs> we had a like a thing on our board. Fant was it awesome? Yeah, it's great to see. Yeah. Yeah. So we got the, the best way to get honey out is either to crush and drain it, so we put in a bit of a crusher. Or we, you remember how we did that with an extraction? We kind of yeah. pushed it all through. Or you can kind of do a similar thing with a, um, a fruit crusher. We haven't got one of those, but maybe that's something we could look at. Um, or you can just eat it like it is, straight yes, up. Like yeah. Nature's chewing gum. Nature's chewing gum. Like we could just cut squares out and sell it in the container. It could. That would be the best. People actually do that as well. It's actually it's really expensive. expensive. And it there was, we, it we were looking at the checkout um, I always the love it at yeah, the no. supermarket and there was this tiny little jar of honey that was $10 yep. but it was like um, $10 too. So. You. you can sit down please. Buddy. Okay, so what we're going to do, I oh, know it's so expensive. So what we're going to do is show you how to actually, can everyone see that? No. Yes. No. 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 Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, oh. Is that, is that a Elizabeth, could you just pass me that little bucket there, that little da, round thing? Da, da. Pop it down. Da, da. Da, 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 da. You know, one good thing about a polystyrene hive, it's lighter. It's very light. So can everyone see this frame? These well, frames? Yeah, 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 and yeah. yes. Okay, everyone's going to be able to see. No, 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 you don't have to come closer because I need all this room. No, I actually can't see now. Back, back. Stand up. Back to where I am. Right back. Right back. Where I am. Yep. Way back. Way back. Up, Jen. Don't touch people if they don't want to be touched, buddy. We sit alone. Okay. So we've got our lid, haven't we? Now we put our lid on this on the upside down. Now the reason we do that is because we don't. If we put it up the other way, they will get trapped. But also too, we don't know what's on the ground, so we kind of put it as a bit of protection. Who's that under there? Angus. Angus, buddy, do you want to go outside and have a bit of a chill out? Or are you happy to kind of just sit there? You can choose, it's up to you. Okay, great. Now, I'm going to move that. So, when we're going through a hive, now every beekeeper is going to do something different. So, if Laurie was here, he would show you one thing. If Carla was here, she'd show you something. If Jen was here, she would show you something. Who else is, if Claire was here, she would show you something. Something different. You said slow Oh, you know what I mean. Something different. Um, so what we do, like I said, we use that little J hook. So we put it in the little slot here. Can everyone see that slot? We lever it up. Pick it up like that. Actually, I'm working back to front. So I always do this side. Like that. Why? Because I'm right-handed. So it just feels more easier for me. Like if I go this way, like that, how am I going to get around there? It's a bit tricky. Hi. So we're going to pop that in. So now what I like to do is I always like to take the second one out first. Because often what we might find is down here, the bees often will make cross comb. Who remembers what cross comb is? Yep. Um, what is it, Nikita? Do you remember what cross comb is? when the bees make um, wax and put it in between the frames. The wrong way, don't they? So if we were just to kind of go like that, what might happen is it would rip all the frame, but it also could roll the bees. So what I mean by rolling is all the bees kind of get squashed. So we don't want the bees to get squashed. So by taking out that second frame first, so remember you put your little hook in. Well, but firstly what we'd have to do, these might be all stuck, won't they? Oh, yeah. So we use this part of the, the heel. And just in between, just gently prise them apart like that. 
So I know that none of our frames out there are stuck because they're all new frames, but in a hive, they're going to be stuck. Yeah. What's, what's the most, what's the thing that we actually, what actually sticks the honey, the frames together? So I'll start with P. Who can remember what it's called? Propolis. Propolis. Now what's propolis? Glue. Glue? Yeah. Bee glue. Bee glue. Which comes from where? Trees. Trees. No? Trees. trees. So it comes from like trees, sap and things like that. Yes, I am. Um, just a quick question. Yes, what's the hole in the thing for the um, No, I reckon it's easier to hang up. But I've got a feeling it, it's a something to twist with. But I don't know, but you know what, we're going to Google it, because I'm sure... We really need that Alexa. We do need oh, Alexa. I know, I know. Ah, 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 don't touch, buddy. Um, so I think it's maybe something that you might use to kind of twist, but I'm not exactly... I don't know, let's figure it out. Let's work it out. Um, and so, or it might just be to hang up, but we'll find that out, because I've never really... I just presume it's to hang up. Oh, of course, remember we checked that out. They do. Remember, they kind of go into a quiet oh, state. Yeah. Uh -uh. Okay, Angus, can I get you to pop back over there, buddy? Thanks, buddy. So, we've loosened up all our frames, haven't we? Like that? So, we don't do it like this. Because then you can get into the. Um, you, can, you can. You can. You can. If you've got honey or bees, you might stab them. So, just like that. Now, that's a lever action. Okay, so if you're twisting like this, and they're really stuck, that's going to hurt your wrist, okay? So by doing that, it's much easier on our bodies. And as you get older, I know you're only young, but as you get older, trust me, these bodies are going to fail you. Isn't that terrible to say? Um, but you suddenly get sore wrists and things like that, sore backs. So what we're going to do is take out that second frame. Now this is the way I'm teaching you. Someone else is going to show you something different, but today I want to see you taking out that second frame. Now you can rest that little edge on there, on the edge of the other frame, while you're picking it up like that. Audrey, could you just quickly grab in that area there, there's a frame holder. So then we can lift it up, have a look. Let's say today we're going to be looking for the queen, okay? So we're going to have a look. Is it the queen on it? I don't know, you have to tell me later. Oh, okay. Don't put it up Oh no, that's okay. So unless they've got, unless it's got um, uncapped honey in it, or we can turn it around like that. Is that those? Sorry, Dave. Are those drone cells? Maybe. Who knows what? Actually, Lila, good, good guessing. They are drone cells. Well done. They are popping out. When they're not like actually actually in the cells, they are. Yeah. Now what we can do here. Is so we're looking for the queen, remember? So we're going to pop that down because why are we going to take that out? Firstly, we've got to check that the queen's not on here. Now, I don't know whether the queen's on here. I've had a look, I know what these cards are, so I don't want to. I pulled out the wrong frame. Okay, so now if we're going to, who remembers what the queen does really well? Flags. She does what? Flags. She does what? Sorry? Lay eggs. Oh, lay eggs, yes, yeah, she does. Oh. But what else is she really good at on the frame? Hiding. Hiding. And she will run so quick. Remember I've said to you before on a frame, where's that queen bee? Here she is over here. Oh, she's a bit longer. And where is that picture over here? Here. Um, she's a bit longer and often she's surrounded by these attendants who will be feeding her and grooming her. But sometimes when you're looking for your queen bee, she'll go underneath. She often doesn't like the light. So as you turn them over to look like that, she's gone back underneath you. So you've got to look really, really carefully. But I can tell she's not on that frame, is she? Yeah, that <laughs> frame <laughs> has it up. <laughs> it doesn't. So if, we, if she was here, say, and I'm looking through here and pushing them back like this, what might she do? Run. She might run. So what we're going to do is split this. Now we've got it split. We're going to split it really easily in like half. Now the reason we're going to do that is because now she's either going to be in this side or this side. Okay? Now, 
If we don't split them like that when you're looking for the queen, you won't ever find her. Well, you might, but you might get lucky. So now that we've loosened them, we can go in. Now remember how I said you can go in from this side on your hive? But it's best to kind of use the frames, I think. But just say we go in. That's it. Nice and gently. I'm looking at how some people find the queen they like. They do, they mark their queens. Can we now, them up? Yes. Uh, two. Yeah. So we're going to lift it up. We're going to check our queen. Oh, no, no queen Don't there. Don't do that because I have honey on the other side. Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh, actually, I think that might be fully cat. No, on the other no, side. On this side? Oh, there is a little bit, isn't there? So you can see this is, what kind of frame would we call this one? Honey frame. A honey frame, that's right. Now, where do we find our honey frames normally in the hive? In the middle? No. Say yes or no. No. See ya. Bye-bye. We'll do. Do we find it in the middle? No. What are we, where do we find it? Close the top. Yeah, and where oh, else? On the outside of the... On the outside of the... Okay. Let's think of what's in the middle. What's in the middle usually? The brood. Well done. Okay. So we, why is the honey around the brood? Why, why? Someone said we could keep it warm. Well done, perfect question, perfect answer. Why else? To make it easier to feed them. Easier to feed the brood. Because what are they feeding the brood? Honey. Honey and what else? Bee bread. But what's in bee bread? Uh, oh. Pollen. Well done. So who remembers the pollen is the, what kind of diet? Would it be the protein or the yeah, carbohydrate? Protein. So remember pollen protein. So where would we be likely to find our pollen? Trees. Trees. Yep, but in our hive. Um, with the bees? Yeah, the brood. With the brood around the brood and sometimes when there's a lot of pollen coming in they'll put it anywhere because they just want to collect it all righty so what we're going to do is take out our frame because we remember we're looking for our queen now we don't put them down like that do we no now remember these little knobs on the end here they give the bees a bit of extra space to come up and through so just kind of line them up so those bees that are sitting there can still kind of come Isn't up. Isn't there usually a hole that they walk through to the other side? The bee space, sometimes they do. So when you get to here, say, how are you going to do that? Turn it around. Turn it around. So if we just kind of do this, right, what's going to happen? Bees will roll. You roll them. But also too, sometimes, the, the remember when we went out to the hive the other day, Sometimes there's that much um, burr comb underneath that it stuck, and then what happens, you rip your frame apart. So that's why we lever it. So when you get to this last one, you can push it up against the wall, just like that. See how I'm moving? And really gently. I don't want to see any of this happening out there, right? Because I'm showing what I don't want to see. I want you to be really gentle, okay? Moving your hives bringing them out okay now if remember how we can launch it on there and then pick it up or I see the queen. oh queen. Shh, shh. we might see so these frames here with lots of bees on it I'll give you a tip that's where you might find the queen I see it. oh yeah I know okay we're gonna look around oh gosh there's lots of what's on there do we think a queen. 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 lots of brood is that open or cat Good guys, good girls and boys, I should say. There's also some really cool things that we're going to see on those. So we pop them there. Okay, well there might have been one, but we're going to pretend we're not because we're going to show you how to have a look in the hive, okay? Now I nearly picked that up with my fingers because sometimes we can do that. But what we also do, which some of you guys might find easy to use as well, is once you've loosened the hive, you can use this and you pop it together like that. But you might just hit the wax. We might. The bees will fix it. And we can pick that up and have a look like that. But with this, you've got to remember to squeeze it. I remember out at the hive when we first got these, when Glenn popped them down, I opened it like that and then I just kind of let it go and the frame dropped. But that's what happens. We all make mistakes, isn't it? Yes, darling. Um, just a quick question. Have you, do you know if you've accidentally put any two queens in any hive? We had a, a long time ago, we had a 
queen down. We had a hive down here. The hives out there oh. have got two queens in any of them. I don't know. There might be in here. We have to see. Um, so anyway, so we've got some roots. So we're going to pop that down. And, uh, we could lift it up like this again, couldn't we? Don't you not, don't you not put down the queen, the hive that's got the queen? Well, if we find the queen, right, yeah. we've got to make sure she stays in here. We don't want her out on the ground. Yeah. Um, we don't want to squash her. So we've got to be very, very gentle. If we find the queen, just say we found the queen on here, okay? I can't use that thing. Just say we found the queen on here. What I would do is pop it back in the box over here. And just say we're looking for disease, so we're doing a disease check. Because when you're a beekeeper, you don't just go in there to find the queen. Sometimes you do. But you really, when you're looking, what you're doing is picking up the frame. I'm going to show you the right way to do it. Yeah? So as beekeepers, what we're doing, we're thinking, huh, that looks all right. That's a pretty good brood pattern. Got some drone brood up here. There's not much honey around here, is there? There's a little bit up here. But there's not much honey. Hmm, let's have a look. Ah, got some more drone brood. Oh, oh my goodness, more worker brood. What have we got up here? Honey. So that's a pretty good frame. You can see there's some, you'll have a look in, in here soon and you'll be able to see some pollen in there. So you think, oh, they've got some pollen. Oh, they've got some honey. Are pictures of our hive? No, they're not. But we are going to make sure we take pictures of our own hive. Um, so we can kind of have a look. So we kind of know... Is there any disease? Can we see anything looking a bit odd? Are there any perforated cells? What might perforated cells might indicate? Yeah, Iola? Um, oh, I thought you were asking more perforated cells. Yeah, so what might perforated cells, what might be underneath them or what might be happening? Keegan? Okay. Disease. Well done. I'm gonna to have to blow up a picture of a perforated cell, I think. So perforated cells, and you can all have a look at this a bit later, but are cells with holes in it. Now, sometimes they might just be uncapped, you know, when the larva, when they cap off for the pupa to grow, you know, when they cap it off. So it might just be that. Now, they're usually in the middle, but don't let that fool you. That is an X. Yeah, but sometimes what you might see is perforated cells and sunken cells. So when you look at it, they don't look nice and raised. Not like drone brood where they're up, but they kind of look like that. Now what's that's kind of indicated is that pupa or that bee inside has died. So it's kind of sucking down. Now that can be an indication of a lot of a few diseases, but like AFB or EFB. Who remembers what AFB is? Yep, let yell it out. American fowl brood. Yep, what about EFB? Um, yep. Which one can be treatable if it's not too far gone. European. 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 Which one is sadly at the end of the hive? American fowl brood. If we get American fowl brood. Now I can tell you for a fact because a person sent this into me yesterday, this picture of this frame. This frame was actually American fowl brood. Why is it Well, it's just old. Oh, why is it black? Why are the bees black? Oh, just a different variety, different genetics. But why, why is the cells black in this one? Yeah? Um, isn't it when there's a clean um, brood in there? Yep. Um, yeah. Just older. Yep. Um, when will you take that hive? Yeah, chill, chill. We're getting there, buddy. I'm going to be testing you in a minute, and so you'll be like, how am I getting through that hive? So, yeah, so what we're doing as beekeepers, we're going to be going, oh, have I got any bees in there first? So in your brain, have I got any bees? Oh, yeah, there's some bees in there. Is there any brood? Yeah, the brood looks all right. Any sunken cells? Nah. They got plenty of stores? Yeah, that's all right. Cool. All right. And also use your nose. Does it smell like Does it smell it funny? Smell like or does it smell like bananas? Smell like bananas. Time to run. Well, no, not really run. So, as we're going through, we can lift out our frames like that. Once they're kind of loose. Now, I'm used to using ideal frames, so I forget there's a whole heap under there. Whoops. Ah, what's going on here? Your, your, your hive is going to get re mm, they're, they're trying to requeen it. Now, what's the difference between this one and that other one we saw? No, they won't practice. But they're in a different spot. Sorry, if I just... Oh, sorry. They 
this is what don't do this, don't do this to your real friends. Where is it? It was on oh, the was last this one. one. It uh, was on the first one that we did.
your freedom of sex accepted? They certainly would. But what could possibly be the problem with feeding one good girl? So that's the only, if you have your apiary and you know for a fact, oh, so I've mucked that up, haven't I? Yes. Um, if you know for a fact that you've got bees that are healthy, there is a problem that you can go and pop them up and go and pop some honey in. But if you're not sure or you're using someone else's, if someone says, hey, I've got some honey, because do you reckon, do you reckon we can tell we've got disease on our honey frames? Not really. It's a bit tricky. I mean, you could probably smell it if it was A and B, but you can't see brood yeah, disease. It sounds like so bad. Yeah, it really yeah. stinks. It smells like, apparently, because I've never smelled it, but rotten socks, like sulfury oh. kind of, cheesy kind of, ugh. So it might be difficult to actually see, and that's something, that's a really good question. When we speak to Carla next, can someone ask that question about how do we recognise disease in honey frames? Big well, question. We ask well, we could ask Alexa, could we? So anyway, so we've finished our inspection. We, now what's the most important thing we do? Do we just leave them all shabby shabby? No, no, be safe. What we do is we need to put them in the middle. Like that, make sure all those lugs are, nah, wait, nah, 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 are touching. Gotta to touch them. Now we lift it up. Whoops. Now what we can do, because we don't want to, we can push those, if there's bees on there, just put them in there. Now, do we put it on like that? Do we just lug it on like that? If we put it on that, we've got all this surface that could possibly squash a bee, like on the edge. If we put it on this, like on an angle, we've only got this bit, this bit, this bit, and this bit. So if we put it on on like an angle like that, maybe smoke the bee if they're coming up, and then just gradually slide them around. Making sure, now where's my bee brush? Just, if there's some there, just brush them off. Do you have any bees on you? Oh. Um, Maybe. <laughs> so just brush them off, protect them. Now we need to have a strap, don't we? Now that hive was good. Say thank you very much, and off you go and check your next hive. So what we're going to do now? Who thinks they know what they're doing? Awesome. Got a bit more. You've got an idea. So what I want you to do is to go and grab a hive tool and some gloves. Wait, wait, wait. Hive tool and some gloves. I want you to grab, put all the smokers in the middle and I want to see your skills. Now, I don't want you forgetting to smoke your bees, okay? Do you want to pop, do you want to pop, pop the water bottle? Just pop it in here. Are there any questions? No. Yeah. And I'm going to... <laughs> but that's going to people, um, to girls.